Craig Lee Thompson, a little booze hunter with impromptu wine review. And this particular wine review pertains to the wine, the 2014 Kamakunda Promise uh, by Gaia, a famed Piemontese producer, but making wine here in Bulgari, Tuscany. And this particular wine review is both impromptu and highly conceptualised at the same time, which in essence is a paradox, like all the great things in life. I mean, when you think about it, you know, love is a paradox. Uh, children are a paradox. Great wines are generally a paradox. And this review fits into that mould. And I won't go into how exactly that happened, but the outcome is that this is a three-part wine review. And that might take some time, so I apologise to those with a short attention span. But the parts of this, I knew what I was eating tonight, and that is porterhouse steak with portobello mushroom, drowned in olive oil, and some Himalayan rock salt over the top of the mushrooms. And I opened the wine, and I, I took some notes on how the wine looked. And then around 45 minutes later, I sat down and ate the wine, ate the wine, I ate the food, and drank the wine with the food and took some additional notes. And now I've had the concept, the idea that I'll take some more notes in the morning once the wine's been open for 12 or so hours. So after my porridge, I'll sit down and do part B, or maybe C, of this wine review. So it's a, it's a three part wine review upon opening, with dinner, and then in the morning, post porridge and espresso. So look, upon opening this wine, um, despite the fact that it, it's 55% Merlot, 35% Syrah or Shiraz and 10% Sangiovese, upon opening it, it looked to me really sort of Sangiovese dominant. It had this sort of bright whole cherry, you know, just smelling this whole punnet of cherries, um, aroma to it, um, dark plums, but once again, uncrushed, just ripe dark plums before you've bitten into them and violet aspect, which you know, generally I consider to be a character of Merlot. And a real freshness to it, it was crisp. And I actually went searching for oak characters and you know, found some cloves and sort of pine needle characters, but they really weren't dominant. And then upon tasting the wine, it was really, it was medium bodied. It had that tangy sort of Sangiovese acidity to it and really, really fine tannins. And, from that, I sort of uh, had a three-point summation. And point one was that, you know, in reality, it looked to me like a Super Tuscan made by a Piedmontese producer. Um, number two, I thought, is my porterhouse steak going to be too much for it? And point three, look, Italian wines traditionally are made for eating with. Am I, have I tried this too early? Am I taking notes on a wine that really, at this stage, yeah, people should not be taking notes on. So then, I sat down for dinner with the aforementioned wine. And to be honest, I think it was the portobello mushrooms, ground and olive oil with Himalayan rock salt that really just matched so, so beautifully with this wine. And I personally was in that state of bliss. I was excited by this match. I had some great music playing. And it was one of those moments that if someone said to me, tomorrow, you know, oh, how was, your, how was your night last night? I'd be like, oh, it was incredible. I just had these amazing mushrooms and wine and I sat down, the music was playing. It was just, it was a moment. It was beautiful. And the wine really, it really opened up. It had the same core to it, but just had this real lush uh, black currant. And there was a sort of fresh Australian coffee grind to it. I say Australian because generally in Australia, we have a a medium roast to our coffees as opposed to the Italian dark roast. So the sort of medium roast of coffee bean, just freshly ground, and that lushness carried through to the palate. And it was it was violet, it was really velvety, which just speaks to me of Merlot in the in the Bordelais way that Merlot speaks. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was an astonishing wine. So look. Part B of this review will come in the morning, but as far as this video goes, you won't notice a difference apart from a slight black, black spot, and I'll reintroduce what we're doing in the morning. It will be continuous though. But in the meantime, 
peace and stay awesome and keep drinking just such awesome wines like this one. Adios. Hello and welcome back. Uh, the bacon and eggs have been consumed, not the aforementioned porridge. And actually around, you know, I don't know, nine, ten hours have passed since we last looked at the 2014 Kamakunda uh, promise. Uh, not the brief one second fade out, fade back in in the video. So let's have a final look at the wine. Um, take three really on looking at the wine. Mm. And look, what, what can, this is really classic European wine. Um, I guess on occasion the Super Tuscans have been known to be a little showy. Um, you know, one of the, the initial claims to fame, I guess, when the movement first started happening was that they were using uh, 225 litre barriques, barrels. Uh, which can impart quite a bit of oak flavour. Um, that does not relate to this wine. Um, it's still got all those red stone fruit characters, your, your cherry, your plum, um, some red currant, beautiful red currant lift, and a clove, um, clove spiciness to it on the nose. And there's this really, still a really fine line to the palate, uh, grainy fine tannins. If I had some more of those mushrooms, I'd be cooking them up right now. Um, but look, yeah, as I say, it's classic European wine. Um, this can age, you can drink it now, but sit down with some good food, some good people, some good music, and enjoy the experience. Peace once again, and still stay awesome.